Yeah, for sure. So uh, my first interaction would have been in the off season of uh, in 2016. Uh, I was a minor league player wasn't a very good player and I was curious as uh just some ways that I could uh make myself a better hitter I was training with uh Buntelmeyer at the time as well and uh he was the same way we were just looking for ways to get better and um a couple of facilities that that let us hit um had them at the time and so we had them on but we we really had no clue what we were doing um it was cool um but other than that yeah we didn't really know what we were doing and then I think my first um experience as a coach would have been when I got released I worked with a travel team and uh, they had a few of them and it was just kind of a way to um, so show some kids the, the progress over time so I was excited to use it but I didn't stay with, uh, with that job for very long so I didn't get to see it out but um, yeah that was my first uh, interaction with it. Love it. Joey uh, just want to touch on tracking data to help your players and I'll ask you the same thing after too. Yeah I think um the tracking data part is good because over time it's it's going to give you an opportunity to to prove to whoever you're talking to, whether that's players or coaching staff, um, you're going to be able to show what worked in the past or what didn't work. Um, so that's kind of my favorite part of the tracking aspect is it's going to create buy-in because there's numbers and there's history behind what you were doing, whether that was a drill or practice design, whatever it might be. Um, and then tracking just opens up a conversation. Like Bob said, communication is so important as we add in more and more tech and more and more data. So, um, yeah, I think the, the tracking aspect just creates a timeline. And as an organization, when you have past experiences, it's easy to build off of those, both good and bad. Yeah, it's, uh, and you guys are starting to obviously add more technology into the mix. So we'll, we'll definitely go there. Um, what going back to, to Joey Hawkins, the, the shortstop, uh, that could pick it, what would you have used blast to help you the most? You think on your swing, just looking back at your professional career? Uh, yeah, I'm similar to Bob, like big clubhouse guy with a little glove. Action. <laughs> um, so there would have been a lot of metrics flagged on my swing. Um, probably too many to even get me up from under the water swing. So, um, but no, I think. I don't even know. I would start with probably some sort of uh, fast speed or quickness and, and kind of go from there. It would be cool to go back, if you could go back in time, though. No, oh, yeah, Bob hit the, uh, the nail on the head there with that. I mean, like we talked about, if you're going to have more and more tech, more and more data, uh, the ability to communicate across your organization, or even if you're in college program or travel ball, uh, you got to kind of come up with your own language, uh, your own system. Um, and I think that's the best way to approach it. We all know communication is key, so it's still important to have your own style of it. But, um, yeah, as far as dealing with data and communicating it, like Bob said, having that streamline of communication is so important, and it's going to keep the flow of your organization and the consistency across the board. Love it. And do you see the side, too, of, like, the communication and knowing the guys and what they're looking for from a just communication side? like? guys that might be really open to like the actual hard data and information and guys that need more of just like a traditional cue. <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta know the player and it's going to be different by level for sure in pro ball. Um, but if you're implementing the right system top to bottom, um, it's going to be easy for a player to move through that system. So I think that's definitely important. Uh, knowing who your athlete is. Um, but yeah, I think overall I just, I'm seeing more and more curiosity out of hitters. Uh, they want to know it, um, and I think it's good to have a conversation about it and not hide anything from players. So, um, but yeah, communication is key. We'll probably talk about it quite a bit today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely oh, agree with the. Uh, I'll definitely agree with the balance part of it, um, making a guy feel comfortable, but at the same time, you gotta you gotta push his boundaries a little bit. That was a really good point, Bob. But. Um, I think just going off of the, the training environment and, and speaking to that point, I think the big thing for me is the why, right? Like if we're going to make a player do something or, or a group of hitters do something, can we provide a why? Uh, I think in the past, coaches, um, all levels, right, like high school, child ball, college through pro ball, like it was just like do it because I said so. Um, but now this is just giving us a platform to say why we're going to do something. 
right? So it, it's it's information that's going to help the player buy in more, um, and you see more trust from it. Um, and really, you'll just see a better environment, like like we're talking about, not just not just about the drill, but the actual environment is like being in the cage or on the field or whatever that might be. Yeah, I think that's huge. Um, you know, we want to get them ready for the real test, which is the game. So along the way, how can we test them um, and have the ability to track if they're passing or failing those tests, uh, which is big. Um, I think what you'll see from that too is when you create an environment like that where there's a goal to meet, like Bob talked about earlier, and they meet that goal, whether it's with blast or off velo machine, um, you know, you start seeing their confidence go up because of results that are happening in practice, not just the four at-bats that happen in the game. Uh, in our environment, that's huge because we play every day, and, and without a doubt, kids are going to hit that 0 for 15 stretch. So finding a way to reward them in practice is, is a huge part of what we try and do, specifically at the lower levels. Yeah, I mean, Buns was spot on with that. Um, I think more than anything, game data just it raises good conversation. Um, it's important. You got to be careful with it because there's going to be guys that that are raking that might not be in certain guidelines that you're looking for with metrics. Um, so how you communicate to that hitter is important. Um, you know, because telling a kid that his swing isn't good enough, but he's raking is a tough conversation, right? So that's why painting the, the full picture. Um, just having that systematic approach of why we're doing things, why we're training things, and using that game data as kind of like the, the target, right, uh, what we're trying to get to. So, yeah, it just helps paint the full picture. With uh, a scenario like that, it's all about how you manage the conversation. Um, I'd probably touch a little bit on environment too, right? Like if you have uh, a system in place where it allows players to be curious and they want to get better, like Bob said, just spin it like, man, you're raking, but, you know, in this in this cage session today, are you just going to kind of go through the motions, or are you looking to make yourself a better player? Um, and, and from there, it should kind of take off. Every Everyone's different. Um, but, yeah, for that specific case, um, like Bob said, that's the best way to take it, is spin it as a positive, um, especially in pro ball where play every day uh, can be a grind. It's if you have excite, if you give them excitement to get in the cage, uh, give them a good reason to work on something, they'll they'll typically attack it. Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's obviously a lot of talk about bat speed and on plane efficiency and being connected. Um, you know, if you listen to the the college webinar last week, what I found quite interesting was you had four really successful programs, and they all answered that that same question a little different. Um, so for me, what it comes down to is, is more about, rather than your favorite metric, uh, about prioritizing metrics, right? You you heard them talk, some value bat speed, some value on plane, some value early connection. All right, well, what's number one, right? If we have a hitter and two out of those two, two of those three need to get worked on, which one are we attacking first and how? Um, so I think, you know, when people ask me that question, what's my favorite metric? There's a lot of good ones, but it comes down to within your system and what you teach, what do you prioritize? And I think when coaches have the ability to do that, that's where they start seeing the most success, and they'll probably realize, like, it's not necessarily just one or two. Uh, it just depends on the hitter.